All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Part 5, Episode 4. All right. The lighter has been relit, uh -huh. and the old man has died. Rip in peace. Yeah. Oh my Soul god. Rip out yes. in peace. A absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, we've got mm -hmm. a stand arrow involved with right. the stand that I believe is connected to, uh, what was his name, Pol Pol? Uh, yeah. The guy who mm -hmm. was in prison. So maybe it's that either that's someone else's stand entirely, or he's got an extremely long range stand, so he has no worries about being in prison because right. it's just him being safe and he can just go and operate with his yeah. stand or whatever. And it does explain how this criminal organization has so many stand mm -hmm. users or will, I'm sure, have so many stand users. For sure. Um, yeah, because they have a stand here. There you go. Yep. But how will Giorno get out of this one? Yeah, it's going to be a stand battle. Yep. Classic, you know, classic stuff. Mm -hmm. um, he failed his, his test. But he also relit it, so uh, right. I'm curious how mm -hmm. this is going to work. Yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be kind of interesting because there could be a double thing where you're like, there's a part of this that's like, oh, you can't actually succeed, or it's about like you know how the conversation yeah. goes, where it's like, no, 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 this is just a red herring. It's more about the interview and whether or sure. not Popol just likes you or not. Or right, something. or maybe the fact that he already has a stand will actually influence the fact that okay, even though the letter went out. You know, right. if you're able to do well here, mm -hmm. then you're still in. Yeah. Who knows? So, uh, y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. All right. All right. Oh, that's okay. awesome. Nice with the checkers on the mm -hmm. on the one side there from the shadow. Oh. Oh. Yeah. But I think it was uh, repeating itself there. Yeah. But it also only noticed him once he stepped into a shadow. Right. Oh! Oh, it literally attacks oh. the shadow. Holy crap. Whoa! Okay, calling okay. it, calling it. Stands are a projection of the soul in that they are actually tied to the soul. Okay. Hence why the damage translates from one to the other, you know? All right. Well, but then what does that mean for him ripping out? So well, well, we've seen souls get ripped out before when mm -hmm. we had stand users in yeah. part three. Right. So, hmm. そこに生まれた気分の欠片たちこの子の手で見つけた凄さ世界を変えるためにファイティングゴールド I can never figure out the beat exactly, so I end up saying things at yeah. the wrong time. <laughs> Fighting gold! Alright. Joining the gang, ha oh, spoilers! Yeah. That is an excellent question. Oh! Dang! Oh! Whoa! Holy crap! Well, not necessarily. <laughs> mm. And he's not gonna fit in my Yep in my gang exactly. Ooh Okay, okay. Oh never 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 Oh Whoa, whoa, wait. Where'd um, he go? 
It's it's like got a relocation kind of thing or what have you. Yep, 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 yep. Come on. Oh. What? Oh, crap. So quiet, too. Yeah. Jeez. So is he going to get a change to his stand? Oh, the sun. Nope, no, no. Crap, crap. Oh. Oh. It's blind. It can't see him now because he's completely out of the shadow. He has his own shadow, but he's not connected. Yeah. Gotcha. Wow. So it's more running on automated kind of mm -hmm. capabilities or what have you. Funny that the heir of Dio yeah, yeah. is talking about how he needs to stay in the sunlight. Right, right. Oh, it is looking at him, kind of. Oh, and Koichi! <laughs> Help! When is Koichi gonna see the stand? <gasps> oh! Oh, man! Dang! Crap! Jeez. But this is him getting stabbed essentially by the stand arrow, so... But I think it's not piercing deep enough for something. Oh, nice! Oh, yeah! Oh, that's legit! Now, now it's immobilized, it can't move. Has no immediate shadow to grasp into. Oh, no, no, oh. that was enough. That yeah. was enough. Wow! Oh, uh-huh. Yep, yep. That's such a cool stand, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, just answer the question, Koichi. なんで僕を助けた。相手の天下は僕の行動が原因だ。あのじいさんはどうしようもなかった。すごく嫌な気分だ。自分の行動は正しいと信じているが、とても遠すぎる気分だ。この夜の序盤なには正しいと信じる
Nice. The tree, yeah! To let the sunlight go through. Wow. wow. Nice. No what? way. Oh my no god. No way. And now direct sunlight. Oh yeah. All right. Wow, this is gorgeous. Oh, it's gonna try it to go underground. No. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. A little more. Ah! <laughs> wow. Yep. This is some, awesome. this is some classic one-liner stuff right there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you might have just killed <laughs> Popo. Well, no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be connected to him at that part for translating damage back. Black Sabbath was the name. Wow. 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 All right. Nice. Nice. Where did the arrow go, oh. by the way? Yeah, okay. Gotcha.戦いがあったこと自体傷。That means you can still get in. Oh, right. ね。すまないけど、この指溶けてくれないかな。悪いが、それでも電話はさせる。Are <laughs> Okay. Okay. So he tells him about his dream, his desires. Mm -hmm. Kochi lets him go back. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he could just show his stand and be like, I'm now one of the chosen. Okay. Okay. <laughs> or even something as simple as having your seat taken to theater on a bus. Yeah. Yes. Okay. However. Whoa, alright. <laughs> There's the punchline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is that? Yeah. A pin? I think it's a pin, yeah. Mm -hmm. Passion. Perfect. Oh. Oh. What did he do? Yeah. What did he do? Doesn't matter. Yep, yep. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. Wait. So, did he do something with the fruit then? Because those are living, you know, they're not, not living, they're a. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe he's not as evil or bad as you think he is. Huh. この女の子って正気なのかってだけど感じるんですお蝶でジョースターの決闘を受け継ぐ3人をうん。It says if it's Hamon life energy. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. あの中には紛れもなくジョースターの意志が流れて oh. oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> Oh, come on, you don't, don't do me like that. Even though he doesn't know who Jonathan is. It's just because he doesn't know who Jonathan yeah. is, you know. Golden dream. <laughs> serious, serious stuff. Okay, sightseeing time. Yep, yep. Oh, the peel, the peel had been pulled back, so... Oh. 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 Oh, he's dead. Killer Queen has already touched this banana. Oh, Holy crap! Wow! 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 Oh my god! <laughs> oh, to me, his team! Oh! Yeah. And here's our squad! Yeah! Here's our squad! Oh yeah! All Let's right. go! All right. <laughs> We're just gonna be all of them at once! Well, and he just uh, killed uh, that guy! Not only that, he, he, he so made hard. it! Like, he set him up to kill himself! Out like, of my mind. like, no one no one will know, you they'll just be like, RC. okay. He decided to blow his brains out for some reason. Anything. That's terrifying, though. That's terrifying. What if I damn about nothing else? Is all I mean. And the gun was in there from the beginning. Like, I mean, no, it was next to. The, it wasn't. I don't think it was in the fridge. It was on. There was like a. There was like a. There was like a. Like a. Okay. Pat, like it was like a. Like a mount of sorts with a bunch of things there, and some of them there were guns there. Yeah. So if anything, we sure. should have been able to notice probably because the gun wasn't there. Right. Because but, it wasn't oh, that. Man. He, it wasn't that he turned a banana into a gun. It was that he turned a gun into a banana. Right. 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 Yep. So that means one of the guns had to have been moved from the 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 mm -hmm. position that it was previously. But holy crap, that's terrifying. Just him looking at this hedonistic pile of, you know, well, basically as he probably was determining, uh human trash basically. Well, well it's well it's not the human trash thing. It's the fact that he killed that guy. Well, yeah, because Popo killed the yeah. the uh, the old guy. Wow, wow, what an ending to an episode. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Just, just yeah, yeah. He's dead. He's dead. Bang. Yeah. Like he changed ooh. his gun into a banana <laughs> because he could see how this guy had his, you know, his hedonistic lifestyle, so he's not going to be uh, paying attention really as much to his surroundings like oh, I'm perfectly safe in here right which makes sense because mm -hmm. you know yeah he's in a controlled environment and whatnot but yeah oh boy but but he used his own words against him what I like with this is that Jorno is basically the kind of character where he's like I have this good nature in that I want to change things for the better mm -hmm. but he's starting to show the signs of the and I'll do whatever it takes to make my gold dream, my my gold right. vision, or, my or, gold experience come to pass, or at least things that no JoJo before him has ever ever done. done. No JoJo has ever decided to kill someone, like as far as what I know. Like, I mean, Jotaro against Dio, but but uh, sure, yeah, yeah. okay, the crap yeah. out of him, yeah, yeah, yeah. What but it is, I would say, more when, so not in a fight when when they're not in a fight. 
Oh, yes, that's the thing, is it's usually always in the context of a fight. Right, and even then it's usually this person was retired, not this person died. Well, a lot of them have died, but... but, but Usually. Usually, yes, yeah. yes, you're right. And in this case, this is completely the opposite of what I kind mm -hmm. of expected from Jorno, which was more of a character who was about kind of the social reform, the uh, kind of making kind of precise little movements and stuff. Yeah. And then, uh, no, he uh, mm -hmm. he's also got a bludgeoning stick, and it's right. really strong. Because because the thing is that what yeah. we've seen of him up till this point is that he's very very much a, a trickster and but he's also very chill. He's very relaxed, right? And he, so so he's not the kind of person that I would expect to even she make the decision to do something like this except of course he wants to completely take down this organization and this person is one of them and he, you know, because of him that old man is dead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he wants to take it down, but he does want to take it over too. Uh, yes, yes. So, so he has to have some organization left in order for it to be something that he takes over. Of course. So, mm -hmm. was it more that this guy was a scumbag, and he's kind of uh, taking on the, the, I would say, kind of the presence or the, the kind of meeting out of judgment and justice that the guy from his past was like. Was like, ah, oh, this guy. This guy is a scumbag who sells drugs mm -hmm. to kids. I'm going to execute him. Right. That's essentially mm -hmm. what he did here. But he's even more genius because he made it look like the guy killed himself. Right. Like no one's going to suspect him. Yeah, but it, yeah, but but it was something that he did specifically because of something that this guy had done. Right. And it was something that he. This this is the first time that he's done something like this. This was b done based on a realization from, you know, a conclusion based on what uh, Pol Pol had said. Yes. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that based on someone abusing your trust in such a manner like this, even God would forgive murder. Which, yeah. which is, uh, oh, is interesting. Because mm -hmm. what... What I what I want to throw out there as an idea, and then we'll kind of recap the the episode and what have you. But I, I want to know what your thoughts are on this as well. Like, do you think we're showing the beginning signs of a villain? Um, like a villain so, who has a dream and starts off right, as right. a hero, does whatever it takes to fulfill said dream, even gathers you know a whole bunch of people. Potentially, you know, the bloodline of an ancient foe of the yeah. Joe stars. One of the so so yeah. One of the things that um, there are a few reasons why I like that, and a few where I'm like, I don't think they'll necessarily go that far with it. Oh, okay. So sure, and 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 it's really based on just how Iraqi wants to do this. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, if he become if he becomes the villain, right? Mm -hmm. That's a great arc. It's a great way to introduce a villain, and they've. And they've subtly suggested that there is a potential for the mob boss basically being the long-term big bad. But, right. But because of that, that can just be the perfect double blind for the fact that it's actually Jorno, right? Mm -hmm. And then, and then, sure. and and especially since if we think about it, like even though JoJo's hasn't really been doing things of the previous JoJo's um, being the ancestors of the next generation in the lineage, they've been hopping around to different spots, you know, yeah. with like Josuke and Jotaro and, um, and now Giorno, uh, that could be a way that they basically tie this up and then they can keep going in like down the regular formula if they want to or, or whatever. Um, okay. What's, what's the halfway that you kind of see it going? The halfway that I see it going is that it, is enough to become a point of conflict, but it's not uh, necessarily that he is the main antagonist. Right, right? I agree. I think like, that that that's more realistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If they did end up wanting to do a villain protagonist Jojo, okay. Like, I, yeah, I am I'm definitely on board, on board for that. that. I don't think it's as likely, but I am on board for it, especially since when I think about it, since because one of the one of the potential issues with this group of characters that he's that he's getting introduced to, right? These these seem to be the squad, right? Right. But if they're also a part of this organization, now there's this guy that's you know that's fat and ugly and whatnot, and we see him kill someone, 
but just because these now they could say that these people are new to the organization potentially but they're still mm. a part of the organization so there's sure. still the idea that they've been doing the same things that Giorno says is despicable and awful right that he's that he's raging against so mm. if they have them be ongoing characters in the story either they would need to have some kind of change of mind in which case then they might need to reconcile the fact that they actually did some right. pretty horrible things before or they need to be aligned perfectly with his vision right yeah which would mean that basically they're 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 all for taking over this organization they're all for doing whatever and but then the the tough part of that is then the way that they would then do the resolution, the final climactic conclusion, is that it would essentially have to be Joe Turo, Koichi, and maybe even bringing in Josuke and some of the others to basically stop this this new blonde menace. Um, yeah, I don't think that that's going to happen. Right. What, I, what I would say is more of a thing of where, let's say he succeeds, he mm -hmm. takes over, he takes over this yeah. this gang mafia group or what have you. He now basically kind of has the sitting on the throne posing right, and it's right. just kind of like all right now we're going to make things run our way mm -hmm. and you know there's no selling drugs to kids or maybe even like no really uh -huh. like horrible things going on but they're still thieves stealing breaking the law they are uh -huh. they are chaotic neutrals at best you know <laughs> like right you know very yeah. very chaotic neutrals uh-huh that would still, I would say, earn them the ire of the Speedwagon Foundation at some point. Right, maybe. and then what? And then how is that conflict resolved? Because I, that can that can make for some amazing storytelling. Yeah, I would say if anything is that they don't resolve it, it's just an ongoing feud. Then it's more of a thing of where he's hmm. going to be set up in future parts to be basically this like this kingpin of this kingpin. Italy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and just over the course of time, you know, he mm -hmm. has his own kids and yada yada yada. Sure. Yeah. And that's where it's kind of like a reboot of the, mm -hmm. the whole kind of bloodline thing is that they now just kind of follow sure. his more so than uh, uh, Josuke's or Jotaro's. One thing that I will say, yeah, right, and that would, and that would make sense too because then they're essentially going down three generations, going back three generations, and then they can go back down again three generations. Like diagonally. Along yeah. Right, on, <laughs> along, along a different route. Right. Um, uh, if they didn't, one, well, okay, so... With however far he ends up going along his journey to take over the organization and all that journey. stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that can cause some some apprehension from the standpoint of, say, Koichi or Jotaro or whatever, mm -hmm. as they're seeing this person who is a descendant of Jonathan but also a descendant of Dio that's doing this stuff, and we can get into maybe he's doing stuff that is good, but they. Are worried that it might not be right there mm -hmm. they, they have that concern and sure. then it's the thing of well are you just looking at him as another potential Dio or are you or are you looking at him as a person right okay and and okay. it's just like there's there's a lot of opportunity here because they're making it something that is not as clear-cut okay yeah and and because it's not as clear-cut I think we can go into the speculation here but I think what's important in terms of the meta thing we can bring in that Araki is trying to bring up is that I think he's trying to make the point in that this is a good guy. This is a good guy. He's going to do some things that no JoJo has mm -hmm. ever done right. based on what he did with Pol Pol. They're no JoJo. Right, but his dream mm -hmm. comes from a good core, a good central nature of him. Right. He's going to do things that, mm -hmm. in some ways, we already knew he was going to have to do in order to be a part of the gang, but because this is something that he was able to proactively get away with because uh -huh. yep. it has more to do with his morals and his belief systems rather than it being a prerequisite to enter the gang it mm -hmm. made us have a little bit of a whoa holy crap that's right. a bit intense so I, I would say let's kind of hold off on a little bit of a little bit of this because I'm, I'm i'm thinking about this maybe at a little bit more of a rather than what i'd like to see and more of kind of a where is this story kind of pointing us towards yeah and it feels like if anything we are going to have um that whole conflict potential thing be more about a uh, method rather than an actual antagonistic kind of relationship with right. the OG JoJo's and yep. um, the Speedwagon Foundation. Which makes sense then why, you know, pairing him up with Koichi is such a good idea because Koichi is, is a wholesome. good boy. He's wholesome. a wholesome good yes. boy. He's <laughs> not going to be the kind of person that thinks that causing, you know, making a a person kill themselves by, by gun in the mouth 
Even if they're a horrible person, I don't think he's the kind of person that would be up for that. No. I mean, he has no. definitely grown up a lot since part four. But, but only two years. Yeah. Yeah. Only two years. I was wrong. I thought it was a lot longer than that. Because Koichi looks... Koichi has never looked so good. Like, he looks like, you know, a short little guy. Yeah, it's tough. Because but, we know that yeah. Koichi's never going to get any taller. So <laughs> so when we see him at the same height, it's like, okay, this could be five years, ten years, six months. Who knows, yeah. right? But now we know. Now we know. It's, yes. been, it's been two years. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Um, so Okuyasu is probably just now finishing high school. Well, no, they were they were all in their last years. No, oh, yeah, I know. Oh, because yeah, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Josuke's finished. <laughs> Josuke's finished, but but okay, yeah. okay. So we've got um, a really cool stand showcase here. We went a little bit more into the world building of how remote controlled long range stands work. Yep, which is something that's interesting to separate though from sheer heart attack because sheer heart attack was not the stand it was a piece of the stand right. let out as an ability whereas this stand is specifically like that wasn't mm. the whole stand that and, wasn't and yet an they ability. mentioned the specific thing of well his hand might have gotten heavier because that's the specific thing that we've seen from a long range stand where right yeah uh-huh right but no damage would go through, well, even well, though it would be affected by the status effect of echoes. Right. It's which... it's one of those things where I love that that even Koichi is not exactly sure. Yes. Because right. Because it's kind of right. Because one, That's a good it's point. not like there's a rule book. Right? No. No. There's. But not. then it's also kind of poking fun at the idea that Araki kind of shoots from the hip. You yep. know, like yep. which we love. Right. It's great. Oh yeah. But but it's just it's just that little bit of self awareness that's that's a it's a fun. nice touch. I was named Black Sabbath. Like yep. like I'm starting to actually like recognize more of the music references and stuff because things are getting more modern with regards to them as well. So yep. that's that's awesome. Um, we have uh, another aspect of uh, Gold Experience as a stand mm -hmm. in that it can slow down the movements uh -huh. a little bit. Yeah. Like slow down their time a little bit. Like, holy crap, what can this stand not do? It's starting yeah. to get a little bit of a, like a, a plot solver kind of stand, which well, I am okay with because that's what stands have always been. But, but it's more just how creative can they be with it, right. which and, he has maintained mm -hmm. yep. with his usage of of transforming things into living objects, right? And they, then manipulating the life force of. Them. It's something that they have basically established firmly at the beginning: the idea of, you know, bringing life to where there isn't in a way, right? right? Which and apparently the effect that that has on the brain or on people is that um, it causes them to freak out mentally. Mm -hmm. But then it's not just that. It also slows them down. So that, like, like I feel like it's something where all the stuff that's being revealed is stuff that's still connected to things that they firmly established very, very early on, at, like sure. the very beginning. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just a, a deeper understanding of it, I guess. Um, yeah. And that's another thing that I, I think is um, a little bit of a... A little bit of a fun thing that will break the mold of with regards to stands. If you think back to the ideas presented in the stands of the earlier parts of part three, mm -hmm. they were really simple stands. I yes. mean, really, mm -hmm. really simple. Yep. The first one I think we technically saw wasn't even Star Platinum, but it was uh, uh, our boy. No, no, I think I think we Star Platinum was the first one because yeah. Okay. Or, or or was it Abdul? It was Abdul's stand, yes. Yeah. Um mm -hmm. the the red bird phoenix. One. Right, fire fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I control fire. Right. How simple, you know. Yeah. I I'm really fast and punch things really hard. You know? Right, right. Yeah. And uh -huh. now we're getting into some just absolutely crazy stands, which yep. I would rather have the stands go more wacky, more bizarre, more oh, crazy course, than being able to understand them fully and well, what they can or cannot yeah, I do. Mean, like, I feel like I feel like once we hit Wamu with the or, or Wham with the vampire chariot horse race, breaking off pillars and you know sabotaging them and all that stuff, it's it kind of is one of those things where it's like. Anytime you try and question something in JoJo's, it's like, who, who do you think you're talking to? Like, right, right, like, right. No, no this but, is JoJo's. But yeah, the visuals um, were, were, were really good. There were Excellent. a couple points where the faces weren't drawn in, so that'll probably be 
fixed at some point in the future, kind of like with what the part four stuff needed to be a little bit fixed, but oh. whatever. Um, the sound design again was so good. The yep. sounds of uh, Black Sabbath, the stand, were really good. And there were oh, parts yeah. where they were extremely muted because it was slowed down. But mm-hmm. when it would exit from the shadows and grab onto, yep. you know, Jorno or what have you, that that sound, that feeling was was chilling. It was terrifying. One of the things that I loved this episode stylistically was when he went into one of his Muda rushes mm-hmm. and the art style very much changed. Like, yeah. usually JoJo's has has very, like, clearly defined, like, sharp black lines and everything in it. And it just helps everything be more extra and, and uh-huh. whatnot. But this was, like... This was like one of those sort of like still still outlines and stylized and everything, but like blurred movement. Lots you know. of black lines all over right. the whole thing there. They yeah, do, yeah. They do that also in um, Haikyuu spikes whenever a character right. goes into like yes. a really intense spike. Yeah, felt or like a that. serve or what mm-hmm. have you. Yep. They would do that a lot. Yeah. So yeah, that's 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 stuff that we've seen before, but it's, mm-hmm. it, it looks really good because it's got that David Productions like quality oh, yeah. to it as oh, well yeah. um we had uh koichi and Jorno having a little bit of a heart to heart as yes. well mm-hmm. um what, what i like here is that i think this is the reason why he won't become a villain basically right is because jotaro and um, um koichi and makes koichi, for a good anchor yes but yeah yeah but they won't specifically antagonize him i think Right. I think if anything, they're going to mm-hmm. slowly establish a relationship via little yeah. bits of communication, and mm-hmm. then it will probably be a thing of where, hey, we understand that you guys are doing things that might be a little bit on the shady side, mm-hmm. but you know we're somewhat family, you know, and that's one of the things, and that... we should we should we should keep good connection and family stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I know you, you know, you know, you and the mafia or the gangs or what have you are, you know, family is important, right? Right. And and we know, guys, we, we know we've said it multiple times, but I'll just reiterate over 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 again because we recorded the first two episodes pretty early. We we know he has the <laughs> we oh. know he has the Joe Star, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, um, we know about that. One of the things but, that I really like about how they're setting this up is that I feel like it's more geared towards character development than in previous arcs. Oh, and so okay. so you know how huh. in the transition from like part three to part four, it was very much more based on, around a location, right? So we had the sense of like, ah, this is home. It's it's Morio, right? And we get to know the people here, you know, all the citizens and whatnot. Okay. But here, because it's something where the relationship between the main cast is not solid from the get go, right? It's Which, not so- what's who's the main cast? Jorno and the old Joe Bros, basically. Now, granted, oh. we're getting the squad, which will be interesting too. But even then, that's something yeah. where it's not necessarily going to be a solid, established connection. Okay, we're cause... basically we're setting things up for mm-hmm. where there will be disagreements, there will be differences between these characters, and yet they're still going to end up working together. Who are you talking about now? I'm still confused because I I think I think I haven't considered anyone really to be a part of the main cast other than Jorno at this point. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No. I, huh. I would say that okay. Jotaro well, and Well, Koichi, that's who I'm talking about. You're talking about Jotaro and Koichi. Jotaro and Koichi, and then okay. also potentially the other people in the gang. They don't have to for them, Okay, but but yeah. definitely for Jotaro and Koichi. Okay, maybe I would switch out Jotaro then for Bucciolati. Sure, but yeah, uh, sure. Because I don't, I don't really know how Koichi I, is going to be involved in the story too much yeah. without getting involved with the... Is this the breaking the law? Is this lawful good kind yeah. of thing? I, I'm not debating how much how how much screen time they'll have, or okay. you know, or, or how m- part of the main cast they are, but okay. just the idea that the previous part characters, yes. right? Yes. That the connection between those characters that there very much is and will be, yes. is not good at the start, right? And oh, it's, and it's sure. going to take a while, quite a while, because of some very good reasons for them to actually develop that trust and and whatnot for them to feel like they're all joe bros together um and maybe that won't ever happen who knows but i i like that as a as an establishment to the characters because that means that there's room for them to grow and there's a specific direction that's set in place for them to grow okay well yeah what i was just trying to bring up is i think they've already done that by having them fight in the very beginning and then koichi leaving on good terms here with Jarno. Meaning that that's probably the first chunk of development, if any, mm-hmm. we're gonna get. Like, like if anything, I'm I'm curious if you think they're actually going to go into this kind of story too much with having Koichi even really being a 
thing that will be developed with the connection with Jorno. Uh, definitely. How often? Probably not as often as say the the crew that they they brought up at right. the end of this episode. But it's it's definitely going to be a thing, right? Okay. It's it's not that it's not that Koichi is just like okay, cool, you're doing that thing. All right, yeah, I'm leaving Jotaro. Let's go. Let's go back to Japan. You know. Gotcha. Yeah, Koichi is still staying. Jotaro isn't pressing the issue though with regards to like you know well, tell me what you know, and also Koichi isn't taking a an ex an expedient kind of method in order to relay said information about how Jorno uh, is you know a good guy basically okay like, that we misjudged him mm-hmm. so I'm curious as to like whether or not it'll actually happen much at all. Because it, it seems like Koichi's motivation was, I need to tell Jotaro that, hey, maybe we misjudge this guy. Maybe mm-hmm. we misjudge this guy. Okay, you need to tell me why? No. Uh, yes, no, I'll tell to... you in person. Right, but he says, I'll tell you in person. But what he's basically saying is not right now. Uh-huh. I'm going to tell you not right now. And then he's like, mm-hmm. okay, that's that's your call. Absolutely. And then Koichi decides to go sightseeing, which means he's not making a beeline to Jotaro to tell him that information because he doesn't see it as important right? in terms of timing. Which means that it's something that's going to happen over the course of this part, right? Okay. I, I'm like, sure like, I mean, possibly. I, okay. I, I just, I don't necessarily see him having any rush to do it if his next thing is, I'm going to go sightseeing right Sure. Now. Yeah. But it'll happen eventually. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, the uh, the Bucciolati crew, uh, we've seen a bunch of them in the mm-hmm. OP and ED. Yep. Um, they Excellent have, designs. They have amazing designs. Gorgeous. But I, I am curious as to how they're going to successfully introduce four characters at the same time who are already a team and mm-hmm. getting this new guy essentially brought in who's going to be the yeah i'm your new leader now or i'm the one that's got a vision is it going to be a thing where they're going to be like huh you who's this guy Mm -hmm. who's this little kid you know well yeah yeah i um, mean there's 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 plenty of ways that it can be done Mm -hmm. um since since bucciolati is is the official leader in the group right that does help given that he's already on Jorno's side. Right. Um, and then they can they could potentially take the time to introduce these characters one by one or however they want to do it, mm-hmm. but then also not just introducing them, but they're going to need to be basically won over, I'm guessing. Now, they might go for the thing of not telling them the plan and whatnot, but if they don't do that, then that'll be a point of conflict potentially where it's we need to make sure that they don't find out that we're actually doing something separate. Right. I, I lost. I lost. I lost. So either Sorry. they're going to be working with Giorno and and Bucciolati or not, right? Now there's working with them as far as the 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 criminal organization is concerned, but for the their real motives, right? They're they're either going to be aware of that and be on board with that, and and Giorno is going to trust them with that information or not. And given that that's a that's a point of conflict that he doesn't necessarily know whether he should trust these people, and if he does trust these people, is that trust you know founded? What will they do when he does trust them? That's a way that they can get at basically who each of these characters are as individuals, because there oh, there are specific gotcha. motivational reasons gotcha. why Jorno would want to explore that. Right, I got you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought for a second you were saying that they weren't going to end up like working together oh no no right yeah <laughs> yeah because they're gonna be working together but are they gonna Obviously, be yeah. working together you know right right yeah, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. i was like whoa hold on how do we get to mm-hmm. that but i understand now okay so then we've got our group we're going to be meeting them next episode mm-hmm. and uh yeah they look really cool oh, yes. um okay. this 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 episode did a lot to make giorno way more badass it did it than, really did then most other Joe Joe Bros main mm-hmm. characters, Joe Stars, than we've seen yeah. thus far. Like obviously Jotaro is the most badass Joe Star of uh-huh. them all. Like hands course, down. Of course. He is Clint Eastwood. He is he is yep. basically just walking around with his yada yada does it. Indeed. But Indeed. Joseph is now like actually in my opinion supplanted like far really? and away with oh, just the man. fact that Jorno is willing to do this. Like, the fact that he was not only willing to do this, the fact that he decided to do this based on the words of the person that, like, 
the the fact that he killed Popo based on the words that he did, meaning that, like, he's like, okay, yeah. that's the life you live by. Wonderful. That I makes can, it I can very play that game too. Very easy for mm -hmm. me to do this, which means, y'all, a lot of what makes Jarno as a character and what he believes that's not firmly established yet. Right. It's things that he's going to absorb things along the way. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, I think that makes him a little bit unpredictable in oh, a way sure. that is... Um, this was unpredictable. Right. But it's unpredictable in a, in a dangerous kind of way. Hmm. And it was literally contradicting the Koichi doesn't think Jorno is as dangerous... Yeah. As yeah. possible kind of thing, uh -huh. as, as we thought. Right. After he literally just killed someone. Which, yep. of course, Koichi knows nothing about. So, oh, yeah. So I... Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's got me excited. It's basically them saying, or Iraqi saying, oh, you, you have no idea how far Jorno's yeah. going to go. I, I, I'm taking this part for a new spin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like... Who knows like, what that'll mean like, exactly. Like... Oh my gosh! Like in terms of the in terms of the level of violence he's willing to do here, like yeah, yeah I mis I misjudged I misjudged. Oh me too. Sure, no, Koichi, me too. Koichi, you guys were were bang yeah. on right in a lot of ways. You're off in some other areas, and mm -hmm. then he does have a good center. Yep. But uh, and, no, no, I was the one that was wrong here. <laughs> and I love that the nature person kills people because. Nature can be scary, right? Oh, oh and gotcha. You know, and, your whole beef with druids all being just yeah, 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 tree uh -huh. huggers and stuff. Right, yeah. right, exactly. Um, so, so I love it, and I have no idea what this will mean for the story as a whole because it can mean so many different things. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. yeah. Y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get an early access there. You can watch full-length reactions there. And all this comes with Discord access, so you can chat with us about these stories, about anime in general. You can get involved with the community there. There's a lot of fun stuff going on. Like, you talk with Jacob about the book that he wrote. That's right. I wrote a sci-fi novel. It's pretty awesome. called Battle Lines. Uh, it's available on Amazon in both hardcover and ebook. Link's in the description. Go check it out. Yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time.